most of my videos are observations rather than recommendations, but this one I want to make a recommendation. It's, it's one of the smartest things I ever did in my life. When I was in eighth grade, I wanted to read Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, uh, which is about 1400 pages. But even though I read a lot of history, that seemed like a bit much to take on. So I decided that I would read 10 pages of it every night. And I decided that I would then read 10 pages every night of some book that would inform me or that would be good for me somehow. And I kept that up from when I was in eighth grade. So that's 14 until my early 30s when I decided to stop doing that for a while. Uh, I think in some sort of vain attempt to get a social life. And, um, and then I started up again in my 40s and I don't remember why I quit in my 50s and then started up again in my 50s and stopped when I was taking care of my mom as she was dying and then I started up again afterwards. And it's a great way to get through a lot of books that you wouldn't have gotten through otherwise. It's the old cliche about inch by inch life's a cinch. Um, because it took me, I don't know, if, if it's 1,400 pages, then it took me 140 days to get through that book. And then I've, I've gotten through, I got through Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire when I was 17 and 18 or 19. I got through um, a three-volume history of Lee's lieutenants. I got through all sorts of love military history. So I've gotten through all sorts of books on all sorts of wars. And um, then I also have gotten through uh, books on philosophy. I read a lot of philosophy that way. There's no way you can take on that stuff and just read it. At least there's no way I can take that stuff on and just read it. And, um, and then at, at one time, I decided that I didn't know anything about the history of art. So I got books from the library that were illustrated histories of Delacroix, um, Rembrandt, um, Monet, Manet, and each one, they were, they were pretty small books, you know, so 250 books would take me 25 or 250 pages, would take me 25 days to read. And um, it was, I'm reading a book right now about the early history of the Mississippi River, uh, early history of the European settlement of the Mississippi River. And like all books like that, it breaks my heart in that the beginning, the Mississippi is a wild and teeming river. And by the end, it's in, it ends in 1860, not there yet, uh, 1863. And by the end, it's filled with steamboats and they've started to dredge it and they, you know, no longer floods the way it did. It no longer moves around the landscape. It's no longer the same wild Mississippi. And I'm finding out all sorts of things I didn't know, like there were some counties in rural Mississippi uh, in the 1830s where enslaved African people outnumbered free whites by 50 to one. And I had no idea. And, um, and almost all of those, the, the, the landowners were absentee landowners. They could have lived in New York City, they could have lived in Chicago. And um, anyway, it's, it's very interesting to, that's the point. Or, or another story. I was reading a book a couple of years ago about the uh, Operation Barbarossa, the German invasion of the Soviet Union. And I've read several books on that before, but this one had a lot to do with the personalities of the generals. And I had no idea that basically the German generals were fighting each other, just like kids in high school. They were all trying to steal gasoline from each other so they could use it in their tanks as opposed to, it's not some united front. I mean, humans are being like humans, just picking each other and, and 
going to talk to each one would go and talk to the supervisor and say, I need all these resources. The other person doesn't need them because he's an idiot. And anyway, the, the, you can get through 3,600 pages per year. That's in 10 years, 36,000 pages that you wouldn't do otherwise. And it's fairly painless just right before you go to bed, just read 10 pages. And uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And it's just, you can learn about a history of cotton, a history of smallpox, a history of, doesn't have to be histories. It can be, you can suddenly learn about uh, the development of the automobile. You can learn about um, what the natural world was like where you live 500 years ago. And I got through so many of the classics this way too. I was reading, I went through a series where I was going to read all of Charles Dickens. I got through most of them. Um, and then sort of David Copperfield stopped me in my tracks. Um, I went for a time where I was going to read one book by every uh, Nobel Prize winner in literature. Because um, you can do it, you know, if, you, if it's one book and it's going to cost you, you know, 25 days if it's 250 pages. And even if it's not very good, you can do that. And I stopped doing that because interestingly, not every Nobel Prize winner in literature has a book out in English. I mean, I'm kind of surprised since it's such a big deal. You'd think they translate them. Anyway, and I, was, I, I got through, I read some James Joyce this way. Um, I read uh, Moby Dick this way. There was no way I could go through Moby Dick just straight. Um, it had to go this way. And then I tried, I tried so hard to do Magic Mountain uh, by Thomas Mann. And uh, I got halfway through and it's like, please, can something happen? Can anything happen? Can you have like somebody rob a bank? Somebody, can they fall and break their arm? I don't care. Can something happen, please? So I did not, I did not, I must admit, make it through uh, Magic Mountain. I only got halfway through, uh, which was still 400 pages or something. Anyway, so I, I got a lot of classics this way um, and that I otherwise never would have gotten through. Um, it's, it's highly recommend that you do this, especially any kids listening to this. If you're, if you're 15, um, pick up this habit and it will serve you well for the rest of your life.